Now, there are many people who've said to me on many occasions, it's all very well having these oh-so-green solar panels on your roof, but how much fossil fuel is used in order to construct them in the first place? They're not green, it's just a con. Well, today I'm going to go and have a look at a factory that makes solar panels that has a slightly different approach. So the thing is, I've come down to this factory outside Cardiff to see how they make solar panels. And they gave me this. I mean, look, it's bendy. I mean, that's not a solar panel. I might have come to the wrong place. So now, Barry, we're in uh, your classic living room situation with some ambient light coming through the window. And that, it's, it's so hard to get your head around that, but that is powering these devices then? That's right, so yeah. There's enough light in here to power something like this, which is a, uh, an iPad case. Right. Um, it doesn't power the iPad itself, but there's a low energy Bluetooth keyboard in there. Uh, and just a couple of hours usage a day um, can be uh, obtained by the light that we have available right. here today. So just leaving it lying about with that, it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be lent up in the sun or anything no. like that. Just in the in the room. On your coffee table, oh, yeah. just harvesting energy as it goes along. Because I've got a Bluetooth keyboard, and all I do is replace the batteries all the time. So that, so this would negate that completely. Uh, absolutely right. Yeah, Fantastic. You, you'd get at least two years usage out of that without wow. having to change any batteries. Or wow. Wow. And then what about the, the remote? Looks like a your classic TV remote, but uh, it's got some <laughs> an extra bit on the side. Yeah, this is, this is a concept to show the art the possible of what right. we could do. With, with just a small piece of uh, uh, DSC technology, you can replace the, um, the two AA batteries that are typically found in a, in a Sky remote. And the one thing you'll notice is it's very light. Yeah. What does that one do? Well, this is a, a remote for a, for a wireless roller blind or, or shade, as they call them in the US. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no DSC technology on this, but it's actually on the blind itself. So it's, oh, right. it's taking light from, from uh, the outside and actually power the blind. Oh, so there's no mains feed to that at all? That's completely no self-contained? at all, no. When we get to the point where our efficiency of our product has increased, then you could put it onto um, furniture and it can be active furniture, actually right. charging things like a a Wii remote or uh, a mobile phone. Right. So with that, that sort of constant trickle, that trickle effect, I mean, is there any other items in the house that, can, that could benefit from that? Yeah, when you consider something like 8% of domestic electricity consumption is products that are on standby, so a small bit of DSE technology on your TV, for example, um, would, would harvest energy right throughout the day, and that's enough to see it through any standby power you have it on for the rest right. of the day. Because that could make a huge difference. Because I mean, that is a, I mean, I've heard those statistics before. Eight percent of the electricity we generate is effectively wasted keeping electronics on the standby yeah. when we're not using them. We're not in the room. We're not even in the house. Yeah. So if that could be slowly removed, that would make, that's going to make an enormous difference. So Barry, we're in your classic British supermarket here. Um, although it's not quite a British supermarket, it's a very quiet one today. But so there's a lot of your technology that's that's around the place, which is. Fascinating. Can you can you tell me something about some of the stuff you've got here? Yeah, some of the things we've got here um, prime for kind of supermarket and retail environments. We've got a uh, dye sensor dye cell that works off uh, indoor light, which means that we can use things like uh, e-ink um, or electronic paper, as some people call it, to power shelf labels and even kind of LED light displays. So what we're not in the sunshine here. We're just in indoor lighting, and that and that's enough to to run these things. Yep. The supermarket or the retail environment is perfect for our kind of technology. You typically get about a thousand lux, which is enough to power electronic displays and point of sale kind of materials mm. around the store. What supermarkets can do here is have one central system that updates prices and offers special offers and two for ones and all that kind of nonsense. That's right, you can get rid of those kind of paper labels and come up with something different. Here we've got an electronic device. And this doesn't actually consume any, any power until it refreshes. Right. So the only time that it's consuming power, when we press that button and we right. change the display. That's completely self-contained then? That's absolutely right. right. There's no battery, nothing in there. It's, it's being autonomously powered by that panel, right. you see. There'd be huge savings, certainly for a big, uh, big supermarket chain. The paper cost alone uh, was in the region about £3 million for right. one major supermarket chain. You presumably had lots of supermarkets coming around and going, oh. <laughs> We rather like this. <laughs> Absolutely. We, we've had um, loads of interest um, in, in the UK, Europe uh, and in the US on these kind of 
um, displays, um, particularly interested in things like point of sale and, and LED lights and things that we can do with these e-ink papers to right. make things more appealing to the eye. So Mark, we're now in a big uh, manufacturing facility with noise and hissing and yeah. whirring. So is this where you make the actual strips that we've seen? That's right, Rob. And, so, and it's in rolls, because that's the thing that's hard. A lot of people think solar panels, big, stiff lumps of glass. But what you're doing here is flexible. It's all on rolls. It's all been yeah. rolled up. We bring the material in. We put it onto, into thin rolls of thin material. Goes through rollers, travels over the rollers. Very fast process. Produces flexible modules, as you've seen already. And what are the materials that are in that then? Because there, 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 there's something that's obviously reacting with light that generates electricity. That's right. The, um, there's, a, there's a dye that responds to the light. Um, that dye sits on titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide is the same material you have in toothpaste. It's in right. wall paint as well. It's a very, very common material. Right. White, very white material. The dye colours that, makes it sensitive to light, absorbs the, the light, the incoming photons, and from that it generates electricity that then passes out through a titanium electrode and goes around an external circuit. Now, one of the things I've heard a lot of criticism about what we know as of solar panels, you know, the ones you put on your roof, is that, is that there is a lot of energy that goes into producing them. There's, there's a lot of heat yeah. needed. So is that the similar process you, you do here? We don't do anything like that here. Um, we, we use a temperature of about 600 degrees Celsius, but on a layer about the thickness of a human hair. So we're only heating up a very small amount of material when we do that. It just sinters that titanium dioxide into a nice structure. The rest of the process is really just about moving the material through the line. But I mean, it is quite hard to understand because my brain just goes, you know, solar energy, sunlight, outdoors, on the roof type of thing. But then, but once you gave me this, I mean, this is, I'm afraid I've been having a lot of fun with this. <laughs> this shows that here where we're standing, when I was standing in a, a windowless clean room in a factory, and the only light in here is from the overhead lights, and this is absorbing electricity, and it's this thing, when I do that, and it goes off, it proves that there is, that it works. Yeah, the, the so meter is showing the current that's being produced. Right. The voltage is, is always there just from, from these numbers of cells coming together. Right. So what this means is showing us how much power is being produced. And this is just, you know, we're just under the lights in yeah. here right now. Yeah. Now these are LED lights that we've got mostly in here. I mean, that's, again, it's part of our sort of green ethos as we're using LED lighting, but the light levels are not very high. It's no. nothing like outdoors. It's, you know, what you might have in your home. Um, this is generating power. Right. And I mean, do you know, I suppose it's still early days yet, but do you know roughly how long this will function, I mean, in terms of years? I mean, is it not, so it depends, no where, depends parts, where you use it and how you use right. it, etc. But the, in, the, in the basic configuration, something like we have here, if we're using it indoors, lifetime predictions say 10 to 12 years. So right. it's much longer than the batteries are going to last yeah. anyway. Um, it's a case of matching it to the product. I want one of these all the time. I just love walking around with it. Well, you can speak to my colleague, yeah, Barry. Nothing. <laughs> Loads! So, Steve, G24i, very exciting. When I, it was very easy to find because there's a bit of a landmark outside. <laughs> yep. But what I have to say, I know it's stupid, I love models. <laughs> <laughs> and this is fantastic. So this basically explains... So we're there. Absolutely. Yep, in there right. somewhere. Yeah. But then you've got this outside. So can you explain the, the kind of ethos behind the company? Absolutely. It, I mean, I, when the company was set up, the philosophy was not just to make a green product, but to try and actually... Um, show how a company can be a self-sustaining company, a sustainable business, and actually model a good way of running a business right. and uh, a green way of running a business. So uh, the turbine was part of the plans from the very beginning. Uh, we went ahead and got all the planning permissions and everything else. And uh, we believe that that makes us the only company uh, anywhere in the world to make green from green. So what percentage of the power that you use in the factory comes from there? Do you know what? It's actually the other way around. Right. We only use 20% of what it generates wow. to uh, fully power the factory. Now, that, that, there's, there's two aspects of that. One, obviously, uh, the turbine itself, and it's a windy location. Yes, <laughs> but yeah. the other thing is that the technology itself is not a, a big energy uh, drain. Right. We've got a, a very thin, very uh, fast-moving roll-to-roll uh, production line, and it just doesn't take that much energy to right. make our panels in the first place. Right. But, uh, I think that the whole... Uh, energy harvesting sort of arena is not something that's been well known in the past and uh, I think with all the focus on renewable energy contributing into the grid what we're actually looking at is how can you take products off the grid. As soon as you start seeing what you're doing you go Oh, you, you, you immediately start thinking of applications, which I'm sure you, <laughs> you just go, oh, I want that on, oh, I could use it. You know, there's all these different things you could use it for, and they all either are plugged into the mains or they're running on batteries, which... Uh, uh, batteries are just you know, criminal in terms of the environment, but right. also you know, financially, but also the 
the maintenance, the hassle factor. Getting rid of disposable batteries is going to be a good thing. Right. <laughs> I've not even thought about it before I came here today, but it is, the, it is potentially the end of life for batteries. For, for, for those things we buy in the supermarket, use for a few hours, chuck away. You know, I mean that. It's certainly the end for disposable batteries. Yes. I, mean, I think. Uh, yeah, rechargeable batteries are different. Yeah. The name you know, energy harvesting film actually sort of talks a little bit about the way we operate. Um, we continue to absorb energy you know, under any light conditions. Right harvesting energy as you like yeah. and trickle charging a storage device so you know, whether that's a button cell a supercapacitor or a rechargeable battery um, but certainly the end of the disposable batteries right. well i've learned a hell of a lot here today it's been absolutely amazing learning about energy harvesting and all the brilliant products they're coming up with and how that's going to change things and how we can stop buying stupid disposable batteries that would be quite a big plus plus i love the fact that there's a massive wind turbine in the car park that's generating so much electricity that the whole factory only uses between 18 and 20 percent of it except today uh, i've used a little bit more because i've had my car plugged in and it's been charged from the wind turbine so now i can get back home that's all for today see you soon <laughs>